Howdy y'all, Joe Wheels here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And as you can tell, our pillar stone that we worked on yesterday is looking a lot better. You know, at the same time though, just because it looks better doesn't mean it couldn't look better or bet bettest. I don't know. I feel like adding a few kind of disruptive kind of splotches of stone here might just kind of give this a little bit less of a boring um, kind of look to it. Like, this is just too plain, by which I mean it's too much of a plain in the geometric sense. Not like Orville Redenbacher Wright came over here and says, I'm going to popcorn up a biplane for, you know, something with my brother. It's movie time, guys. Anyway, so just kind of mixing this up a little bit with a bit of extra stone, I think, makes all the difference in the world. And arguably, I could put in some gravel here as well, but I'm kind of short on gravel at the moment. So just texturing it with depth rather than um, changes or transitions in texture will have to do for the time being. But yeah, just kind of like strange, uncertain circles. Now these are arguably maybe too regular even because, dang it, Let's go ahead and try looking at these from up here. Yeah, they're not ideal. I need to really vary this shelf a lot more before I could consider this done. But that's okay. You know, we can always come in through here and, and make some parts of this thicker. And, you know, there's just a lot that we could do with it. But that's not the point or the goal of this episode. The goal of this episode is to fix a lot of things that look bad from overhead. Because we want this to be a flyover part of the country. That people fly over and they go, man, this was a great place to fly over. Why didn't I fly over here before? You know, we want to be the American Midwest of places that people fly past in Hermitcraft. Did you know we are, like, really centrally located between the main spawn area and Mumbo Jumbo's base over there? You know, that's why we have that giant pig for people to look at. You know, if somebody's flying from spawn to Mumbo's base... We want them to see something that takes their breath away and makes them say, oink, 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 because that's how pigs talk. And sometimes when people can't breathe, they sound like pigs. Hey, here's something ugly. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, or not. This is going to be a very difficult landing, I think. So here's what we're going to do. Whoa. Well, that was even more difficult than, than I thought. Okay. So, new plan, we are going to go back there again. Um, poor false, she feels bad for me. Don't worry, I had a long and meaningful life, and I died the way I lived, plunging into the ground while looking at my inventory. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to grab everything we just dropped and then make a second pass on that. There's no reason that we can't land there via a combination of ender pearls and flight. Like, did you know that man's flight has been around for over a hundred years now? A century of flight, they call it. So, you know what? I'm not a hundred years old. It's okay for me to not be as good at flying as, you know, the people who invented it. And then, you know what? Most of them are dead too. So, I don't know. Maybe there's something to learn from that. Maybe not. Maybe that's overly morbid. I don't know. Anyway, let's grab all this stuff before it despawns. Make sure we got both our shulker boxes, both our picks. Gonna want our armor right away. Because, you know, sometimes skeletons and stuff spawn over here. And they are bad news. No skeletons at the moment, which is fortunate. Okay, well, I think that this was mostly everything I had in my inventory. Nothing obvious is missing. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our ender pearls and our rockets and we are going to take another shot at this dang it okay we are third try is a charm not a good charm maybe it was a bad luck charm for those real who would make those oh yeah people who are mean so here, here's what we're going to do we're going to come up here then we're going to throw the ender pearl nope wrong okay that almost worked this is the sort of thing that, like, I, I feel like I should be able to do relatively easily. No. Dang it. Okay. Well, what if I just throw it on top of there from here? Am I high enough up that that's... Well, no. Okay. I feel like we're pretty close on this. 
Maybe if I just kind of tweak the ender pearl a little bit like that. Nope. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and let our health regenerate for a second. What would be a good way to do this? If I was just, like, actually smart, one way to do it would be to use ladders and stone and just, like, pillar straight up from here and chop that down and then pillar back down. Which, you know what, at a certain point, we need to admit when we're beaten. And, I mean, you know, after, yeah, after something kills you one time, I feel like, you know, maybe that's the threshold. Maybe we're there. So we're just going to come up here, like so. And then we'll just hit that until it's all gone. Bye-bye. And then, whoops, oh, dang it, I want the silk touch pick. There we are. No, no sense having to recast that stone. Now, arguably, I should take down this tree as well, but I don't have a good axe with me at the moment. And we can always say it was hit by lightning or something. That's fine. I am really excited about the new uh, textures in the upcoming Minecraft release. They've got new bark textures, or actually, kind of the opposite. They've got new tree trunk textures for, like, logs that have had the bark stripped off them, which I think are going to look really cool. Um... Because I love the natural wood grain, and having that on the outside of the trees is going to be pretty sweet for construction purposes. I've actually got that whole little village back over there that I want to still need to build. Um, can't see it right now. But I was thinking, like, that is the inspiration I needed to really get that done, is finally having this new type of log. Although, I'm not sure when Hermitcraft is going to switch to the new snapshots. It might not for a while because of... Um, uncertainty about world gen and we don't like having our you know big youtube server get messed up by stuff so we try not to break things actively oh wait what was that joe was having such a good time talking to you guys he didn't even notice look i fixed something else the uh, top of this has been missing that segment for so long and now my feet are on fire okay so to recap so far today we've martyr moderately dang it We've moderately improved the shelf over there. We've removed a missing piece of the top of a tree. We've placed glass up there. Um, there's just always little places that we can improve the server. Or our part of it. I'm thinking, though, I should probably go make an axe, like, right away, though. Like, how hard is it to make an axe? Not very. So what's my excuse? That I'm too lazy to find iron? Well, there's iron right there. I just had to cook it. It's not enough. Boom, now it is. Hey... Look at that. See, sometimes when we try to help ourselves, we realize that we've actually already helped ourselves in the past. And then we can build off that toward a, uh, you know, exciting and extensive future. I'm also realizing I don't have any logs. Oh, wait, what's that? I picked up some logs earlier when I was punching that tree. So, boom. We are in good shape to get this underway. You know? You don't have to worry. Everybody calm down, relax, chill. We've got this axe. Re relax. There we go. So let's head back over to that tree. I have safely traveled back across bay and grass. Dang it. I wish there was like a better word that rhymed. I, so I could say like, I traveled over bay and meadow. But like, instead of meadow, which does not rhyme with bay, I'd be like, I have, I have traveled over bay and boat, and traversed sand and meadow, whoa, whoa, dang it, uh, poetry's hard, let's, uh, I don't know, I guess I could just call it a med day, it's like, med day, my lady, that sounds pretty terrible though, I don't think I'm gonna do that, it also makes it sound like a day, which is not, you know, what I want people thinking about when they think about my bay, I want this bay to be family friendly and exciting so anyway here we go we are just gonna clear out the end of that tree there whoops and there we go bay beautified folks flying over are gonna be startled by the improvement they'll be like wasn't there a terrible partially destroyed tree there from when joe got like surprised by mobs and shot off it i'll be like not today friends not today. Although I did die in the process of clearing it. 
So, let's go ahead and see what we got over here. We've got... I don't know that there's much to improve right here. This this gate here could use a little something. Like, hmm. I think I just kind of skipped like a stone there. That was kind of neat. But like, I mean, I could possibly shore up this island a bit. That might be a project for another day. If you guys have thoughts on how I could shore up this little entrance, like, to the theater. Ideally, what I should do is have, like, a whole, like, movie theater concession stand thing and extra boats and a dock. Yeah, building a dock here would be really good. I might wait until the water update, though, too, for that, so I can try putting, like, half slabs in the water and see how they go. Hmm. Well, either way... Let's go ahead and... Oh, you know what I don't have here is a good way to jump into flying. Now we do. Oh, this little island is... This This actually, this back corner of the bay here is one of the least loved, I think. I've always wanted to do something with it. And I never really did. I came out here mapping it one day. I think I forgot my boat or died out here. But, yeah, there could definitely be something go that goes here. What would be a solid improvement for this space? Hmm. Maybe some sort of... Like, we've got the boat in movie theater over there. We've got the Rubik's Cube that way. We've got the castle that way. Let's just hop up in the air and look at this from a few angles and see if anything jumps out at us as an obvious improvement. So, we've got this peninsula here that you could build something on, but I don't want to distract too much from the movie screen. We've got this island... And then this kind of hill here, which we could have, like, a small bridge connecting out to, or some sort of dock, or maybe have a ship docked in here. Yeah, like a little pirate's cove type thing. Although, I think this is maybe narrower than it looks. Like, if I actually start building a ship, it might not work very well. Hmm. And then back here, yeah, so this island, or this peninsula here, actually juts out pretty far into the bay. If we come up this way. Hmm. Maybe we could do something with that. Like, actually, oh, having, like, a lighthouse there. Although, really, you'd probably have a lighthouse more at, like, the entrance to the bay. So... Like, a lighthouse, the obvious location for it would be right here. This would be where your lighthouse goes. Which I am pretty happy with how this little entrance did turn out, so... Hmm. Anyway. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and think about a few more things that we could fix up. Time skip! One thing I was looking at at the entrance of our bay here is that, you know, I've still got this island here that I started wiping out, but never quite got to. And it's not as immediately obvious from the air as some of the other flaws or errors. You know, air is a great word because it's like what we breathe, but it's also our mistakes. Joe Hills, I breathe mistakes. You put that in Latin, you print that on a coin, put my face on that coin, you go to the, you know, uh, I was going to say zoo. Well, I guess, I don't know, anywhere that accepts coins. You go to the zoo, your local uh, garage, um... Uh, Anywhere, anywhere money is, is tended, you show them that coin, they'll be like, oh, this is not legal tender. You, you clearly should be paying us in, like, local currency, not stupid Joe Hill's face money. Actually, I'd be really impressed if you gave somebody a coin with my face on it and they, like, knew who it was. So, just a side note. I never expect anyone to actually know who I am. Like, even people I've met a few times... Like, I'm just, like, if they're, um, if they're, like, uh, a big deal in some way, like, uh, somebody who makes a webcomic that I like, or a YouTube series that I like, or something, you know, whenever I see them, it's, you know, uh, which might be every three or four years at a convention or something, I, you know, kind of reintroduce myself, like, hi, I'm Joe Hills, you know, uh, good, good to see you again, um, uh, I don't know, I think it's not good, but... I'm also, like, I don't want it to be awkward like I assume they remember me because sometimes, you know, 
you go a few years without seeing somebody and you look different. I don't know. But yeah. Don't make money with my face on it. Actually, that might be considered forgery by your government. So, yeah, you probably just want to steer clear on the whole. Man, I really need to get some night vision potions or something. So, while we're on the subject of errors and failure, um, you know, I was talking to uh, one of the folks on my Patreon Discord about creating a daily habit of creativity. And I'm not going to say I failed at that conversation. That's not the lead in here. I, I think I did okay. But um, basically, you know, um, if you want to get good at something, it helps if you practice it every day. And so, like, making videos or drawing or photography or whatever, if you can create a habit where you are not dependent on other people to complete some sort of task every day, then you can go a lot further than if you have a, a habit that is kind of more dependent on other people. Now, I'm not saying, like, oh, you should never work with other people, but, like, if you are just saying, how can I grow as, as an artist in some way? Um, one of the, you know, especially if you're uncertain about getting started on that, and it might not even be art, it might be computer programming or something else. Like, I would really recommend picking something that you can do under your own power every day, where you can't blame somebody else for screwing it up. Like, if I said, um, every day me and my friends are going to, um make a three-person video where we jump rope and sing a, a, a song that I wrote that's funny. Well, then what if I can't get all of my friends there every day? Then, you know, realistically things come up. Maybe this jump rope video thing is more fun for me than for other people. You know, whatever. So my goal of, like, saying I'm going to make a video every day where I write a funny song and I edit it and it's great. That'll be good practice for writing, for editing, and I get to see my friends. Well, the fact that you've made it dependent on other people means that, like, if one of the friends backs out, then you're just like, well, I don't have anything to work on today. And that's not ideal if your primary goal is to self-educate and to uh, develop a, a habit of persistent creativity, you know? Like I said, it's great to work with other people. You should do it, but if that's... If creating something with other people is the goal, then obviously you have to uh, work with other people. But if self-improvement is the goal, you want to avoid creating situations where other people can be the excuse for you to not work on it. And, you know, that's back to the failure element. You know, you might literally just not be able to work on whatever the thing is if the other people don't show up. And then what now? You know, you're already off your schedule of doing something every day. So, just uh, something to think about, you know, like writing or photography or something like that. You know, you want to pick the path of least resistance when you're trying to cultivate a new habit of creativity. Because it's so easy to say, like, oh, this is inconvenient in some way, I'll, I'll come back to it or whatever. And then just to never do that, you know. So... If you find things that have as few external factors as possible, and, and other people isn't necessarily just collaborators. It might be, like if you said, um, I want to get better at programming, so I want to jump straight into Minecraft modding. I want to modify servers. Well, Minecraft modding is actually a lot harder than other types of programming in some ways because there's no public API for Java Minecraft. Um, and so... Basically, the people who make Minecraft don't make it easy to mod. So instead of just focusing on programming fundamentals, you end up having to navigate a whole bunch of extra elements here that maybe you'd be better prepared to deal with if you worked on programming on your own first. You know, kind of, uh, if you think about taking challenges and trying to stagger them, so instead of dealing with all the difficulty at once, you overcome one set of difficulties, and then you queue up the next one. So you could say, okay, I want to make Minecraft mods. So I'm going to start learning the fundamentals of programming in the same language that Minecraft is made in. Then, after I do that, I'll start getting involved with uh, the Minecraft modding community and seeing how they accomplish similar things with the more difficult tool set. Because 
dealing with obfuscated code from a third party like Minecraft is very challenging. You don't want to necessarily just jump in on that. I mean, I, and if that is your dream, though, you know, you might be more persistent at these things than I am. And so I don't want to, like, say, oh, never do this. But, like, think about it. Make an informed, intentional choice when you are working on how you want to spend your self-cultivation time. So let's go ahead, and we are actually making some pretty good progress on cutting into this thing. And unlike cutting down that tree, this is not, like, almost killing us every minute, which is wonderful. So we're just going to keep hewing away at this for a few minutes. Time skip. All right, we are making a ton of progress here. Look at this. Look at how much this shelf is, like, so much more obvious than all of that down there. Like, let's, let's get in our boat here and just look at how this approach is different. I left part of it up for demonstration purposes, just so you can see how much we have improved our approach here. So you look at that. Those blocks, clearly shallow. Clearly not a shipping lane. That's what we're trying to communicate. Shipping lane. This, much better on this side. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. But anyway, I'm about out of time for the day, so I am going to go. But until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.